What up fam, welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna take you guys through a full day of eating while on a 1600 calorie deficit. Now, it's been a while since I've done one of these videos, but you know, I figured it'd be good to show you guys how I approach dieting while on a large deficit, just mentally, and then also show you guys just realistically what I'm consuming on a daily. Now, with that being said, this video is not intended to tell you guys that you need to eat or drink certain foods throughout the day or that you need to be on a 1600 calorie deficit in order to lose weight. Remember, everyone's unique and have their own tastes or preferences. However, I do hope that you guys take away some tips or tricks to just help you guys throughout the process and maybe make your own weight loss journey that much easier. So without further ado, let's get into the first meal. So for my very first meal, normally I'll swap back and forth between an egg white omelet and some spinach, which has obviously got a decent amount of volume and also pretty low in calories. But with that being said, I get super sweet cravings, especially the very first thing when I wake up. Sometimes folks will get cravings at night, but for me, it's the first thing in the morning. So with that, we're gonna make some cakes and you guys know me, if you've been on the channel for quite some time, I love my pancakes. So we're gonna whip up a batch of the McGriddle cakes. And if you guys haven't checked out that video, I'm gonna go ahead and put it up in the right hand corner. But not to toot my own horn, I just absolutely love this recipe. So we're gonna go ahead and toss in the rest of the ingredients. I'm gonna go ahead and also list the actual ingredients up on the screen now. So if you guys wanna try it out, feel free to, but we're gonna go ahead and toss in our wet ingredients. You know what would be really interesting? If we could turn these cakes into, I don't know, maybe Hawaiian punch blue raz cakes. Let's give it a shot. All right, breakfast is served. We got three solid cakes along with some strawberries, our good old sugar-free maple syrup, and you can't forget the good old fat-free ready whip. Now, in terms of total volume, this is really gonna hold me over for at least the next few hours and also satisfy that sweet craving. And like I mentioned earlier, I do flip-flop back and forth between egg white omelets and some spinach and these cakes. Just really depends what I'm craving on that particular day. Coffee is just gonna give me an extra pep in my step. Now, overall, total calories and macros, I'll go ahead and put up on the screen now. What I do think is really important about the dieting process that does need to be emphasized, for me personally, mindset is everything. It plays a huge part in how you go about the dieting process. And dieting can be difficult, regardless if you're losing 200 calories or getting out into the low thousand range. Our bodies just sometimes don't like the adjustment. So as long as you stay positive about the whole process, the way more enjoyable and smoother it'll be. Oh yeah. If you guys are looking for some blueberry cakes, just toss in some Hawaiian punch blue raz. So if you work a pretty hectic nine to five schedule like me, I'm like literally in back to back meetings throughout the day. And oftentimes it makes it really difficult to get your meals in. So with that being said, I'm gonna go ahead and take in a protein shake. And I usually do this about twice a day, a couple hours before lunch, and then immediately one right after my workout. Now, definitely prioritize your meals over drinking your calories, just cause it will definitely help to satiate you, keep you fuller that much longer. And also I think it's just way more enjoyable. And no, I'm not just trying to plug in transparency labs, I just find protein shakes to be way more convenient, especially when you're on the run. You guys know that I love these flavor enhancers. They're so versatile. You just saw me put them into pancakes. You can also put them into popsicle holders just like this. I picked this up over at TJ Maxx just for a few bucks, but really it's just water and one of these flavor enhancers definitely satisfy your sweet craving and also zero calories. Cause oftentimes, you know, maybe you're trying to save up those additional calories for, I don't know, a specific meal throughout the day, especially when you're dieting and you've got a deep craving, maybe for a pizza or I don't know, maybe a burrito or some sort of sandwich. Those calories you just don't want to go to waste. So with this, you can make a super easy popsicle, gives yourself something to chew on. You're also getting in your liquids and also gives you a nice little sweet touch. This one in particular that I've been making recently is the root beer. I've just been craving it for some reason, but it is delicious. Mm, mm, mm. Sauces, sauces, sauces. You guys know that they can easily just level up your meals. So I'm gonna share with you guys just a quick few ones that I've been using pretty religiously, especially when I've been dieting on the 1600 calories. So first up, doesn't need an intro, sriracha. 
easily one of the best in terms of just spicing up my foods. Obviously, Tapatio, Valentina's, great hot sauces as well. I think salsa in general, especially because most of the time it's just lower calories, is a great option to just give yourself a little bit of extra volume when it comes to spice. And also, I think does well with so many different types of foods. Then next up, we've got the G Hughes. This is absolutely a game changer when it comes to barbecue sauces, just because barbecue sauce in general can have so many additional calories. Then if you guys are prioritizing your salads, you guys are probably consuming a bucket load of greens. And if you're using a salad dressing, this is my go-to. Yes, Skinny Girl Raspberry Vinaigrette. Lastly, if you're a big fan of rice or maybe even just cauliflower rice, coconut aminos. I know there's a couple different variations of aminos. They are essentially a replacement for soy sauce. So if you wanna try and get away from the sodium, this is a great alternative. Now the coconut aminos is just one of my favorites because it has a little bit of a sweet touch to it, but does just really well for your stir fries or even your fried rice dishes. On top of that, if you mix it up with some Worcestershire sauce, ooh, it's good. Of course, we can't forget them greens. Gotta level up your turds somehow. And for popcorn, for all you guys who are having a hard time finding Smart Pot, if you guys are in the local area, Kroger, you can find this thing called Jolly Time. They do a pretty good job in terms of total calories. It's pretty much the exact same thing as Smart Pop. So this is lunch. We have our salad, our turkey burger, and our popcorn. And I have been addicted to this popcorn for the last, I don't know, three, four months. This is so good. We'll get into that in just a second, but total calories that we're working with is about 700 total calories. My number's up on the screen now, but this is my daily lunch. Honestly, like I like to have a lot of variety during my meals more specifically midday. Just really kind of helps kind of push me over the edge. But at the same token, you're probably noticing that not every one of my meals is anabolic. Like I'm not looking for the most amount of sweetener. I'm not looking for the least amount of carbs or the least amount of fat or the highest amount of protein. It's pretty even keel to be honest. And for me, that's just how I approach dieting. I try to have balance within my meals. And every day I usually have maybe one or two maybe meals that are considered as anabolic recipes. But outside of that, this popcorn right here is delicious. So for the popcorn, this is just really an easy way to level up the flavor, especially if you've been eating popcorn just as is. So if you have any ranch seasoning, definitely toss it into the bag right after you popped it. It should be good to go. You guys don't even have to use ranch seasoning. There's a bunch of different types of seasonings. I've even tried it with taco seasoning and it works really well. So give it a shot. So for dinner, we're gonna make a stir fry or a fried rice. And like I mentioned earlier, in terms of sauces, coconut aminos is gonna come in handy. If you got some more sister sauce or if you wanna work with soy sauce, feel free to, but that's what I typically work with. Now, in terms of ingredients, we've got three and a half ounces of day old rice. And for all you guys who love fried rice, but wonder why that rice isn't coming out as flaky as what you normally see over at a restaurant, it's because you're not using day old rice. That rice has got a lot less moisture than say, for example, if you just cooked up the rice. So just keep that in mind. Then we've got a half cup of frozen vegetables along with five ounces of chicken breast. And then last, we've got about 60 grams of egg whites. Now I'm gonna go ahead and season it with just some black pepper along with some salt and some garlic, and then obviously topping it off with a little bit of spice. Now, since everything's gonna go essentially into one pan, I typically start off with the egg whites. It's just a lot easier to incorporate the very first get-go, because then once you incorporate it afterwards, just the rice gets super soggy and just gets all wet and the flakiness is just gone. So we've got the 60 grams of egg whites. Then we're gonna add our rice, add our salt, a little bit of garlic, some coconut aminos. Oh yeah. A little bit of sriracha. Then we got our veggies. Lastly, we've got the protein. And we're done. Oh, take a look at that. It's like the size of my head, yo. But no, seriously, look at all that color. So this is clocking in at about, I wanna say about 360 total calories. Go ahead and put the numbers up. But this is usually my dinner. It's super easy to whip up. And then not to mention, you're basically hitting your micros and your macros. And I love it. 
Also, you cook everything in one pan. One pan, that means essentially two dishes to, to wash up, uh, hopefully. But, you know, with that, this is usually my dinner, fills me up, and, you know, for those of you that aren't big fans of using rice, because it may be too many calories, this is three and a half ounces of rice. And obviously, if, again, if you're not the biggest fan, swap it out for cauliflower rice. Just make sure to use a little bit of seasoning. So salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic, a little bit of coconut aminos, and some sriracha go a long way. So it's definitely time for a snack. And according to my fitness pal, I've got maybe a little bit over a couple hundred calories to spare. And for those of you that follow me on Instagram, ho oh, ho. You know what's good, safe and fair granola. This thing is addicting. If you haven't tried it, I don't know what you're doing. They've also got a bunch of different flavors online. Key lime is also really, really good. But since granola can be super dense too in terms of calories, this is 130 calories, which isn't too bad. But again, the volume, you just don't really get it. So we're gonna put together a quick and easy birthday cake cereal. So when it comes to cereal, I usually pick up a bag of puffed rice cereal, brown rice, and also puffed millet from Amazon. So in addition to the puffed rice cereal and the puffed millet, you're gonna need a sweetener along with some sprinkles. Who doesn't love sprinkles? Sprinkles are optional, but come on, it's birthday cake. You need some sprinkles. You got some cake batter extract along with some French vanilla blend and then also some sugar-free maple syrup. Let's go ahead and put this together because I wanna show you the volume difference. Check out the volume on this. We're only using 15 grams. And we got 17 grams of the brown rice. Come on, take a look at that. So we've got 32 grams of granola and then 32 grams of puff cereal. What? So we got 25 grams of a sweetener. I just prefer using a confectioner sugar. Then we got 25 grams of good old sweet glory. Then we got three grams of French vanilla. It's birthday cake, so we need a little bit of cake batter. We're gonna do two grams. And here's something to think about. If you're just using the extracts, extracts just know they're alcohol based. So if you mix this in with your cereal, you're gonna get a slight hint of alcohol on the tail end of the flavor. So if you really wanna round things out, just pick up a birthday cake skinny syrup flavor, mix in about three to five grams worth, and then you should be good to go. And you know we can't forget the sprinkles. Sprinkles! Doesn't that look gorgeous? I mean, take a look at that. All right guys, super important. When you guys put this into the oven, 350, for four minutes total. You're gonna put it in for two minutes, take it back out, give it a good mix, and then put it back in for another two minutes, and then you're done. We've got the homemade birthday cake cereal and then the safe and fair birthday cake granola. So this bowl right here clocks in at about 168 total calories, whereas this amount right here clocks in at 130 total calories. Difference is pretty obvious. But anyway, at least for tonight, I'm just gonna have half of this and then also this protein shake. And for all you guys wondering if you can meal prep this cereal, Definitely. You can just throw it into a Ziploc bag and then you got cereal for days. So we ended the day at a little over 1600 total calories. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And you know, I really wanted to show you guys what I realistically eat on a daily basis, working up to my powerlifting competition. Yes, I'm gonna be increasing those calories, but if you guys took away some tips, maybe a new trick, maybe some new perspective, you know, tag me in your Instagram creations if you do whip up something. But otherwise, I hope this video helped you out. And for those of you who are in your weight loss journey, maybe you're in a very significant cut, just know that not everything is gonna be perfect, right? The larger of a deficit that you get into, the more difficult it's gonna be to get super high volume, super high protein, everything, and also be sure to get your micros in, right? So things are just not gonna always be 100% perfect. So when it does get tough, make sure to set that mind right, because it can definitely make a world of a difference. Anyway guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure to flex on that subscribe button and give this video a big fat thumbs up if you got some good value out of it. But otherwise, if you've made it this far into the video, we're gonna try something out. Comment turd power. I wanted to see who has all made it to the end of the video. Anyway, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.